In this tutorial, we'll learn to build our first slide with Articulate Storyline 360. So the file we're going to build looks like this. And if you take a look at it, you can see we have some text on the slide. We have a heading text. We have some body text. We have some placeholders here for menus that include icons for the graphics. And we have a background image as well as a character. So let me close the preview. So when you first open Storyline, you're going to be in Story View. Now Story View gives you a big picture view of your project. Now if you're only starting out, you're only going to have one slide, and that's what we see right here in this example. However, I'm just going to bring in another example here. When you start to build more complex projects with a lot of slides and scenes, Story View becomes invaluable for managing all those relationships between the slides as well as getting a big picture view of where things are and where they're going with your slides. But for now, we're just working with one slide. So this is all we'll see. Let's go ahead and open this slide. So we double click on the slide. And now we are in what's called slide view, which is very familiar if you've ever worked in earlier versions of Storyline or even Microsoft PowerPoint. And it's in this view that we add the content to our slides as well as the interactivity. So most of your work is going to be done here in slide view. All right, so let's go ahead and get started and insert our first blank slide. We do that by going up to the Slides tab. And here under Basic Layouts, you can see you have the available layouts for the current template that you have. So if you're just starting with a new project, you're going to see just the clean slides, which have no background graphics or customization. If you've already inserted a template from Content Library or imported a PowerPoint template, you may see some additional layouts below. So I'm just going to choose the blank white slide, just so we start with a, a, a clean slide. So just click that, and that inserts a new slide. And now we're ready to begin adding content to our slide. And so if we look at our first slide, we can see that there's some things here we want to recreate. We have a dark background for most of the slide. And then we have, obviously, the graphics and the characters and then the, 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 the graphic placeholders for menus. Let's go ahead and begin by adding this background shape for our graphic. You see how the shape has a, a white border around it. And then there's the, uh, the dark fill for the background. So we can do that by going up and inserting a shape. So insert shape and the rectangle shape is fine. And you can just click and drag to set it on your slide. The first thing I want to do is get rid of this outline on the shape. So to go to format, shape outline, and then we'll turn off the outline. And I'm going to pick a dark color here for it. And I'm just going to size it up to match the size of the slide. I'll show you how we'll put that border in there. Now, it looks like it filled up the slide pretty well, but to verify, we might want to bring up the size properties just to, to verify the pixels are uh, perfect. So right-click the shape and choose size and position. And on the first tab, size, I can see it's 540 by 720, and that's correct because that's the size of our slide. If I look at the position tab, I can see everything is centered uh, and registered at 00, 00 pixels, which is correct. To get that white border, there's a couple ways we could go about it, but since I'm just working with shapes, what I could do is just add an extra 10 pixels around the outside. So I can take that 10 pixels away from the shape I just created, which is currently at the full size. So 540 minus, say, 20, right, for the um, 10 off the top and 10 off the bottom. That'd be 520. And then for 720, we could just bring that down to 700. So we're essentially subtracting 10 pixels from each side. Go ahead and click Close. And there's our shape. And we have a quick way to get this shape centered in the, the slide, and that's by going up to the Format tab, Align, Align Center, and then Align Middle. And now we have a perfectly centered shape. I'm going to come down here to the Timeline, and I'm going to rename this BG Shape for Background Shape. And let's go ahead and lock the layer just to make sure that we don't nudge anything. Okay, so there's our shape. Next thing we want to do is let's get that background image on our slide. So we'll go up to Insert picture. And if you're following along, you can find office windows in your assets folder. If you are using your own image, that's fine as well. So just select the image and click OK. And you can see that the image is uh, it's a square image. So it's not the same aspect ratio as the rest of our course, but that's fine. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure that this image is the same size as that background shape that we created. And we can just resize this image by dragging the sizing handles. And when you get to the same size as the edge of your background shape, you'll see that Storyline adds some alignment guides so you can visually confirm that it's the same size. And we might want to crop this a little bit. So I'm going to go to Format, Crop, and let's just bring this image in a little bit and click away from the image. 
and let's reposition this now so it lines up not only with the top and bottom of our background shape, but also the right edge of the shape. Okay, so that's in place. Let's go ahead and also rename this image, and I'll rename this to BG underscore image for background image, and let's lock this as well. All right, so we have a background shape on the slide. We've got an image. We've looked at a little bit of some image and shape formatting. All right, so now let's go ahead and add the text on our slide. We just want to add a, a menu title, and then we'll add a, a little blurb or caption for the actual description of the slide. So we do that by going back up to Insert. We're going to use the Insert tab a lot. Text box, and just click once on your slide, and we'll just enter a placeholder text main menu for the slide. All right, so if the text is dark, we can lighten that up by just selecting the font color. We'll make it a white. Let's make it a little bit larger. And we'll also make sure to select the heading from the font. And we'll give it a, a bold style. So somewhere around 28 should work. And just center it in the, uh, in the shape right here. All right, so let's go ahead now and add a, just a smaller text for the uh, subtitle or description of the slide. All right, this time just go back up to Insert text box and drag out a text box. Now you can type any text you want in here. If you want a, uh, a quick tip for adding quick placeholder text, you can type equals, equal sign, lorem, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and click enter. Now that adds a little bit more than we need, but let's first change the color to white so we can see it. And I'm just going to make a selection right about here and then delete the rest of it. That's a nice way to add some placeholder text to your slides when you're just working on design comps or interaction templates before you actually move into official development. All right, so this point, that's our, our heading text. Let's go ahead and name them in the timeline. So I'm just going to rename the menu text txt underscore heading, and I'll name the second one txt description. And I'm gonna select both the title and the description, and let's go to format, align, and then line left. Just want to make sure that they're properly aligned, and if I need to drag this other one out a little bit, I will. And now they're at least lined up correctly here on the left side. Going to lock both of those just to prevent me from accidentally nudging them or moving them or deleting them. Next thing I want to do is add the placeholders for the buttons. Now, if we look at the original slide, we can see that there's some text there. There's a button graphic or a shape, and there's also an icon for each of the, uh, the menu items. Let's go ahead and begin by inserting a rectangle. We go up to Insert, Shape, and choose a rectangle, and just click and drag to draw it on the slide again. And let's remove the outline, so go to Format, Outline, No Outline, and you can see again, as I start to get uh, resizing this, I can start to see Storyline's little alignment guides pop up. And so there it is on the slide. And let's choose a new color for our shape. You can choose anything you want. I'm just going to choose a little bit lighter color, still something dark. Now, if you want to resize the button or make any changes, now's a good time to do it. And let's go ahead and edit the states of this object. So click States and choose Edit States. And here we can add some additional objects here for the first state of this, of this uh, menu item. So I'm going to select the shape, and I'm going to first insert an icon here. And again, go back up to Insert, Picture, and if you're following along, you should have an icon menu, a PNG file. Just select it and click Open, and that brings that into the file. I'm going to drag it over here to the left side and position it over the shape. Now with the shape and the icon here, I'm going to add some menu text. And a fast way to add text to your shapes is just to select the shape and then begin typing, and it automatically adds the text to your graphic. Okay, so now that our first item, menu item, is set up, we can just duplicate this. And there's a few ways you can duplicate in Storyline, one of which is just to press the Control key down and then click and drag the shape. Kind of like this way. You notice that if you uh, click and drag, you can also see the alignment guides pop up. So duplicate it a few more times so you have a total of five buttons on your slide. All right, so once you have your items on the slide, go ahead and align the last one, the last menu item, with the bottom of the background shape, just so that those two edges line up. And looking at our, our shapes here, we can see that the alignment's a little bit off, both vertically as well as uh, with the left alignment. So just drag a selection around all of them, or alternatively, you could just shift-click each shape. But in this case, the uh, dragging a selection is a little bit easier. Go up to the Format tab, choose Align, and then choose Align Left. 
and that aligns them all to the left. And with the object still selected, go back to the Format tab, Align, and this time Distribute Vertically, and that adds the even spacing between all of the objects. All right, so now all you can do is just change the text. You don't even have to open up the shape to change it. You can just click once on each shape, and we'll update the menu items. Now when I look at this, everything's looking the way we like. Let's go ahead and just preview the slide to see how it looks. Okay, everything looks the same in preview. Now the only thing I notice is that when I, when I mouse over these buttons, I don't see any visual feedback. Nothing's changing here. And that's because we didn't add a hover state to our buttons. Let's go do that real quick. So close preview. And we'll just select the first menu item. Come down here to the States tab and click Edit States. And we want to add a new state just to give that visual feedback when the learner mouses over uh, the button. So click New State. And Hover State is a built-in state, which means it has some built-in properties. So just select Hover and click Add. And let's just change the color. We'll just make this a little lighter so that when the learner mouse is over, it's really visible. This blue works fine. And that's all we'll do to customize it in this example. Click Done Editing. Now, rather than going into each of the remaining four buttons, we can rapidly apply the styles we just created on menu item one to the remaining four. And we do that by selecting the first button, go to the Home tab, and click Format Painter. And Format Painter is going to copy the attributes from one object to another. So if I just click once on menu item two, you can see now that it added the hover state. Now another faster way to work, since we still have three more buttons, is we can actually this time double click the Format Painter and it's going to keep the Format Painter persistent. So now I can click Menu 3, Menu 4, Menu 5, and the Format Painter still remains active. Go ahead and press Escape, or click away from your slide. And now let's preview our slide. So preview, preview this slide. And now when we hover over our buttons, we can see that we get the, the visual change. Okay, so next thing I want to do is just add a character to our slide, just to finish this off. So go on up to Insert, Character, and here you have access to your content library characters. You can see the, some characters we have already downloaded, while others um, have not been downloaded. I'm going to choose the illustrated character, and this time I'll select Juliet. I think the illustrated characters look great, and it's actually nice contrast with this photographic background. So choose a expression, and I'll just choose talking, and a pose, hand on hips is fine, and we'll insert her on the slide. Okay, so she's a little small right there. Let's go ahead and crop her, and then we can just scale her up so she takes up a little bit more area here on the slide. Okay, so looking at my slide, everything's good. The only thing I should come back here to do is just make sure I've renamed the remaining objects. So that includes the uh, five menu buttons as well as my character. So that's really all there is to building your initial slide in Storyline. Obviously, there's a lot more you can do, and we'll cover those in the following tutorials.